Guys, welcome back to another adventure. Uh, we are headed to a little place I like to call Colorado. Uh, some of our good buddies. We, me and Logan, it's kind of not a last minute second trip, but uh, my buddy Luke from Weatherby called me about three weeks ago and asked if I wanted to go hunt some deer out on the eastern plains of Colorado. I'm not gonna uh, speak before my turn, but there's a reason we're gonna go out there with the Weatherby crew. There's something that we need to lay our eyes on, lay our hands on, and we're gonna invite you guys to come with us and check it out, something new. But we uh, are just getting ready to leave for the airport. We decided to fly into Colorado, rent a car, and then drive over um, to the eastern part of the state and meet Luke and Mac and some other guys from Weatherby to do this hunt. So uh, pretty, not, if one thing I'm not taking, let me show you what I have. I've got a bag, my hunting pack. I've got a carry-on, or not a carry-on, a check-on with all my first light camo. This is wishful thinking here, my Yeti hopper. Um, hopefully that's coming back with me full of venison. And Logan's about got the same. The one thing I don't have is, again, don't want to speak ahead of my turn, a weapon. Why is that? Listen, guys, I believe I'm allowed to shoot a mule deer or a whitetail on the eastern plains of Colorado with this tag. So we're going to go see what's out there and uh, maybe shoot one of those guys, maybe a mule deer. I don't know. I will tell you this. I have had a hankering the last couple weeks for mule deer. Uh, we're going to throw the stuff in the back of the truck, head to the airport, fly out, meet the guys, and uh, go spend five days having a good time. Come along with us. Guys, this is a first for me. I've been to a lot of country stores, not country stores, a lot of like hardware stores, a lot of sporting goods stores, a lot of country stores picking up different tags, buying licenses in different states we've been, we've gone to. Never been to a big R. You guys know about big R stores? On the outside, they're advertising fertilizer, they're advertising chainsaws, ammunition, boots. cowboy boots, cowboy pants, more cowboy boots, and Carhartt. What do you say about Carhartt? They used to be about, uh, car used to be about the construction worker, now they're about uh, inner city kids. My, my kids wear Carhartt shirts. I don't, I don't know where they're going. Anyway, we're a big R. Uh, let's go get a, a landowner voucher. What's up, buddy? What's happening? Get in here. Did you shrink a little? Them. You grew, man. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Hey, man. How are you Dude, doing? your hair's looking good. Dude, I'm going bald. You're Flat growing it out? I fell asleep on the way from air. What's Denver up, buddy? Here. This year? I don't know. I like, got to a point where I was just like, little sound. Logan, Logan wakes up, what are you on, Mike? Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> going down, Casey. Layton, nice, Layton. Layton. nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah. Sam. Sam, good meeting you, man. Nice also, too. Sam. Sam and Sam. Yeah, like yeah, also Sam. Casey Logan. Sam, Look, Sam Layden. Layden. Yep. Nice to meet you, boys. Nice, nice to meet you, man. I'm nice Sam. To meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Guys, we just made it. Uh, Pheasant Lodge. We are out in Colorado. I'll give you that much. You guys know, good buddy, Luke. Torkelson from Weatherby. Uh, we just got to see, uh, if you're watching this right now, the new the new Weatherby rifles are out, and we're gonna dive into that. That's kind of why we're out here is to shoot these new rifles, and Luke's gonna dive into more of the concept behind the new rifles. But we got Luke, we got Mac. You guys know Mac. I'm, I, they call me the Logan of Weatherby. We're going to go around the table and introduce everyone. We've got a very eclectic group of people, which I'm excited about. Um, so start here with Layden. So uh, publisher of North American Whitetail, Gundog, and Wildfowl. So work as general manager of those content brands and then uh, play around on North American Whitetail TV as producer and co-host there as well. So. Got quite a bit going on. Cool, Sam. I like that. Um, <laughs> what is Sam? I'm director of operations for Infinite Outdoors. We are a DIY tech-based platform for um, all things big game, small game. I'm here with Sam Seaton. Uncool Sam. Uncool Sam is the official <laughs> name. <laughs> so, um, I'm one of the uh, founders and CEO of Infinite Outdoors, and pretty much just find excuses to hunt. And, Find tasks for big fella here to do. It's big fella and cool <laughs> What's the what's the short version of what Infinite Outboard Outdoors does? Um, it's it's a uh, platform to connect uh, ranchers and private landowners with DIY hunters and fishermen, um, all from a mobile app. So it's tech advanced version of uh, 
like Airbnb, but just for hunting and fishing properties. With the way Luke explained it to me, when he told me about it, I was like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think about that idea? It's great. But Airbnb for hunting properties is, to me, what is, and it's amazing. So this is all a property, right? Yep. On Infinite Outdoors, and we're gonna go experience that tomorrow. We have three of us have tags in our pockets. Whitetail or mule deer? I heard 200 or bust is the number I heard. Get thrown around. I don't know if that's right or not. Both but species. We're no gonna pressure. stick to that for at least six hours tomorrow. <laughs> Till lunch. Till lunch. Good morning, good afternoon. How are we guys? It is 5.50? No, 6.12. We're 12 minutes late. Uh, plan is to go out and glass for some mule deer slash whitetail. They're saying it's a pretty like 50-50 split. So these tags are good for either or, whitetail or mule deer. And it's about a 50-50 split where we're at. So chances of finding a really nice mule deer and a really nice whitetail are very high. Um, we've got three shooters. Uh, we decided Layden is up. Right, Layden? You, you feeling it? We're gonna let Layden uh, take first crack as soon as he misses or decides not to shoot me and Luke are gonna be right there backing him up. Just kidding, he's not gonna miss. He's a really good shot. I heard he's like one of the best in uh, Northern Missouri. So let's go jump in Old Blue. Glassing up some bucks. Uh, these guys said it's about a 50 50 split white tailed mule deer out here. Is he? So far, I think it's 100% oh, sure mule deer. Just, I'm okay, I'm a mule deer guy. But we're just driving around all these different pieces they have um, leased up and trying to find the right one. I like the program out here though. Like, you can obviously glass deer from the road, but he said if you want to find the big ones, you're going to have to hike into some of these areas that are a little off, far off the road that don't see a lot of people or a lot of traffic. So we're kind of in between uh, the spots, but we figured we'd stop and look at these deer. There's a nice deer in there. I don't think he's a first day shooter, but he's tall. I think he has a big heart. And I think he has lots of friends, so <laughs> not all that bad. Like I said, it would be nice to be able to see what those antlers are on body was. He was some relative size. I know. He's got some cool bases on him, doesn't he? <laughs> Does he? Like yes, my. Look what we got. Yeah, pretty cool. We got a white-tailed buck that uh, is bedded in the only remotely tall grass around. We can't really see his whole body, so we're having a hard time getting a real solid judgment. Looks like he's got some bass. He might be a hair narrow, mm -hmm. but it, it's it's a mature buck. That's all we know. So, me and Luke have either of our tags. We can shoot whitetail or uh, mule deer. Wade, who you can see in the background, he has a whitetail only tag. So, spotted this deer. He's a nice deer. He's just laying down, so it's hard to like 
compare his ears to anything, his body or anything like that. So Layton decides to go and try to put a stock on him, get a little closer, get to like within 100 yards and then make the call if he's going to shoot him or not. But I love this idea of hunting out here just because, I mean, the trees are very, very sparse. And I mean, the sparse I can see. That was not what I expected to happen. There's another deer that popped out where he was. Duh. Same spot? Yeah. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to stand for nothing. No. And he never uh, stood. Well. He just sprinted from laying down. He's still sprinting. He's like three Is he? miles Still running. Yeah. We thought he might stop there and just give us a second shot, you know, like a mule deer. What the heck just happened? Yeah. yeah. No interest. You see that doe pop up after you guys were walking back? Uh-uh. <laughs> she's, no. she's at the top of that doe. She, that's probably what they were looking for. When that, Did you see the younger buck stand up yeah. initially? Yeah. They're both looking we're like, holy cow, there's another buck. Yeah. <laughs> Good practice run. I figured I don't have enough steps in yet today anyway, so. <laughs> so, did you get a better look at? I mean, you were pretty close. Yeah, I think he's probably a three or four year old deer. Yeah, I mean, he, when he turned and looked at us there, and his neck kind of bristled up and thickened up, and, that'll do. When Max started doing the jumping jacks, you know, is, is, are they just trying to move him and see, or is he going no, to try to shoot? I could see from about like right that's here. That's what up. we thought. Yeah, so that's what we thought. And still couldn't tell where his body was relative. I could see his neck kind of go down at a downward slant when he turned back that way, but that was pretty wild to watch play out. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty cool. It was fun. Uh, it went from 15 to. 120 real fast <laughs> talking about temperature wise it was freezing this morning it had like six layers on now i'm down to two and i'm still sweating but I've seen a lot of deer man it's been fun we've only really hit two two spots so is that the plan is just keep hitting other other yeah. areas and the nice thing about it is definitely an area you can hunt all day they might be bedded but the chances of finding a bedded deer out here are are high, especially in comparison to like high country areas we hunt in Idaho, Utah. The grass is only about three feet high, so I think if we spend our time behind the, the glass, we'll be able to see some shiny antler tips sticking up. And the uh, plan is to get close to some good food sources, some winter wheat, some corn, and then look into like the little draws and valleys and CRP and see if we can't find them bedded. Just below him. Hot foot. He hit his foot. 
Back. Back. Golly, that's a tough deer. He just laid down by another bush. Dude, good spot. Yeah, heck of a spot. Holy crap. Oh. Woo. Thanks, guys. Hey, no problem, dude. <laughs> Way to Fun stick adventure. at it. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I am a 100% believer that you know, chasing down an animal that you've already shot at shows a lot more tenacity than just... Oh, man. Yeah, you never want that first shot to go like it did, but... I know, but sometimes it does, and yep. if you finish strong, that's what matters. Yep, gun did its job, but I, I failed on mine. Dude, you just oh. killed a buck. Yeah, <laughs> Good job, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, we, uh, we were going to hit one more spot here before lunch, and um, they've got a little bedding area here that's off of the side of a big cornfield. And uh, we were talking with the Sams, and they said, hey, this is an area where we pick up a lot of deer uh, quite often. They like to sit down here midday and, and chill, so... We came over the hill and there's a, a windbreak right here of cedars and um, we bumped a doe and then uh, another doe, a doe and a fawn pair and they ran down into this main drainage here and then they kicked up another six does and fawns with them and the whole time they just kept looking back and we never saw anything else and as we started to move on and they moved on up over the hill, this guy came out of the ditch and what he had done is just basically hugged that ditch and got some separation between him and the does just for safety purposes and uh, he came up on the hill and we had a long shot. I took a long shot and I just didn't do my job. I pulled off of him, hit low. Watched him come into this cut and we knew he had to have stopped right here somewhere and we walked right up on him, not even 100 yards, and he was right there bedded. And so, just had to wait him out. When he stood up, we put one through his heart and, and uh, I put one more in him just in case and he is now dead up on the hill, it looks like. So, a little bit of a rodeo, <laughs> man. Sometimes they, they don't always go like you want them to. Just uh, got Layden's buck cut up and uh, on the backpacks and head for the truck. I li really like this area. I like these, the way they hunt it. I mean, basically hunting just all around farm fields and then these dry creeks, but they don't like driving in here. So just because they don't want to spook the deer. So we've been walking, you know, through the fields, which I mean, not far upwards. I think this cornfield we walked, just walked through is a mile. But then you get back into these, uh, there's a little bit of topography and the animals are way less spooked. So even though we killed this buck, you know, half a mile from a cornfield, we're just packing them out so we don't have to drive in here. So one buck down on day one, we got two more tags. So I like the way things are happening. My, my Casey face on. What's up guys? We are out here in eastern Colorado and uh, we're just looking for deer, you know, just looking. Seen a couple deer this morning, no buck so far, but we're gonna keep on the lookout. Layden shot a big one yesterday and uh, we're just looking for big mule deer. We're gonna find them guys. They're out there and I'm telling you right now, big deer are going down today. Dude, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> How was my Casey? I'm gonna, Is I'm Mac gonna or just Casey? I, I, well, that was, that was, it's gonna, pop up it's gonna say Casey from Hush and he's just gonna photoshop your face. You did so pretty good. It's a deep fake. I'll take that man that sounded just awesome. Say. PHN I don't even know what PHN is. PHA. PHA? Uh, teaching, is it, is no. it a teaching moment? We need positive hunting attitude. Okay tell well, 
This is, I'm actually Casey's body double today, so I'm still obviously learning. Obviously we have the same body. <laughs> two peas in a pod, you know? <laughs> well, day number two here, out on the plains of Colorado. Um, we have a pretty good plan, I feel like. So me and Luke are the only two that have tags. And like I was saying yesterday, these deer love to feed in the fields, and then they love to go in bed in any sort of like depression or anything that they can feel like they can kind of get down in and out of sight so there's this what would we call this a, a canyon no a draw a draw a small draw that runs basically like it runs a long ways but we luke and that uh, and the other crew are going to come in from the south we're going to come in from the north and uh kind of meet in the middle but it's like four miles we're going to be hunting but there's all this corn up above and there's even some standing corn which there's not a lot of standing corn out here so we feel like they're going to be in the corn at night and then come down into this draw to bed during the day so we're going to hunt from the outsides in and meet in the middle and hopefully uh maybe push a deer by luke or luke push deer by us so i've got the new weatherby mdt I'm shooting, this is in the uh, six and a half RPM, which we've been shooting a lot this year, but I'm super stoked about this gun, man. It just feels dangerous. Model 307 from Weatherby, brand new. Uh, liking this a lot. What a fun hike! I'm take the guns for a while. Keeps them happy. Keeps them shooting up. You know, we really just wanted to take the new weather the V307 on a hike, and that's what we did. You got to see some absolutely gorgeous country. You know, explore the cornfield, see some places that deer should be. Overall, I think it was a good experience for him. You know, there'll be a lot more experiences like that coming up for him, but you know, that was a good first. So. Um, no deer, but we can check that one off the box, right? Yeah, we and then now we don't have to waste our time on it tomorrow. Yeah, we only have like 86 more boxes we got to check. But he was I running actively people. away from us. I don't know. He is smelling the dough right now. <laughs> yeah. Everybody to get closer to him. Guys, it's been a pretty slow day for uh, deer activity. Did some things this morning where we thought we were gonna find some some deer and just didn't. It was uh, it's the best looking country I've been in so far, and there was just weren't deer in there. So very similar to elk. Um, you find deer where you find deer or deer or where you find them or wherever you want to stay but we just didn't find them we did just happen across some it looked like some mule deer does like 12 does and a buck buck is doing some rutting things what do you think there mr luke well i would say that even though we just saw at least a dozen deer we've still seen more coyotes than oh we have goodness. deer today <laughs> i think we should maybe get into uh running a trap line a next trap year line. out here yeah i think between the coyotes the size of that really cool moon right now i think that's uh <laughs> not helping not helping you guys have the hats for a trap line we have hats for They're anything pretty much good hats you know really yeah. doing bad ba things we have 42 minutes of all? hunting time today uh the problem with late season hunts is Last shooting light is 4:48. Let's go try to get a better look at this thing. Yeah. There's a road directly south. What? Yo. Dude, grab my phone. Just make sure that eyepiece isn't Dude. Still rolling. Eyepiece. Right through here. Dude, he's like heavy. Yeah, we caught him. Can we go kill him? Yeah, he's on ours. What? Text Luke, tell him to get over here and go kill this thing. 
you look through this thing with your eye and watch him. He's like, like big like bass or something up top. He's what? Just look at him and tell me what you think. His tops are really weird. We just got, we're about 900 yards from those deer. We finally caught up to him, got in front of him. And he's not, he's like narrow, and but it's like super heavy. It has something weird, like, it's like he splits on his fronts and he kind of goes back and he's just like, to me it looks like this, I don't know. He's not a, like old deer, like a giant deer, but he's kind of Bump your shutter speed down if you switch. 24 yeah. frames. What's that light mean? Dude, we're late. The sun's already come up. Guys, uh, good morning, good afternoon. How are we? It is day three of our hunt out here in Colorado. I have an idea. It's gonna change things. Laden here. Say hi to Laden real quick. Flash order Laden. Laden left. <laughs> anyway. I was like, Laden's not here. <laughs> We have th two tags still in our pockets. Our good buddy Layden, who was there, it's not there anymore. Killed the deer. Me and Luke are like, oh, I don't know about that one. So what we, what I decided to do anyway is we're gonna eat beef. Good old beef today. And I think what's gonna happen is that once we eat this beef, we're gonna be like, that stuff sucks. We need some venison, and then we're gonna start killing deer. That's my idea. But we're gonna make some uh, Mississippi pot roast, the old fashioned way, in a pot, in a crock pot. <laughs> I'm assuming there's a new way to do it, but I don't know what, <laughs> what that is yet. I guess it, the new way would be in sous vide. Yeah, we were, went to the grocery store last night, and I'm like, hey, I'll throw in help, help with dinner tomorrow. What's happening out there? We've got a dense fog advisory, so that's kind of cool. It goes for like the next three hours, so literally can't see anything outside. I just so. went to stash some stuff in my truck, and it's humid, windy, cold, and crazy foggy. All, all in our favor for finding big deer today. <laughs> really helps with the glassing. So. <laughs> we'll see. We shall see. Good shot.
hard out. Cool. It's a baby giant. That's yeah, seriously not a bad buck. Guys, uh, the day was decent. I mean, we saw a deer, we saw a lot of deer. We saw probably 30 deer, 10 bucks. But really, we've just been waiting to come back and eat Mississippi pot roast. Turned out good. Boys are eating some uh, sandos. We're gonna get uh, some some pot roast in our bellies. It turned Luke. out so good. Luke Luke's liked him. it. And then uh, make a plan for tomorrow. We have two more days still. We gotta kill some deer. We got off to a real quick start. Uh, Layden killed the buck first day. We're like, oh, one down, two to go. Now. 48 hours later, we haven't killed any more bucks. So we need to get killing. Tomorrow though, tomorrow's the day. Pull down there, walk over the top. Can we help this for sure? Did I hit him? You're high. Back down. He's gonna die, dude. <laughs> yeah. That first shot was great. <laughs> Dead buck! Oh! Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, boy! You feel like an army man? That was a grind. Dude, well, you come out here not knowing what to expect, the Eastern Plains, you know, 
and we kill a buck literally the first three hours we're out here. So me and Luke are like, heck yeah. Well, four days later, we haven't seen a shooter until just now. Uh, all I can say is this model 307, and this is the, the, what, the six and a half RPM Weatherby, shoots really well. We had a pretty good headwind coming in at us, just at 500 yards. Um, MOA called for up 5.9. Dialed exactly 5.9, shot him in his bed. I know some people are silly and don't think you should shoot animals in their bed. Uh, I disagree highly. Shoot an animal the very most comfortable way you possibly can. The animal's comfortable, I'm comfortable. Shot him, he got up and died. Well, dude, that first shot was money. Woo! Dead buck. Heck Good job, yeah. bro. Heck of a shot. Let's go, dude. Shot him in his bed. I don't know if that. I'm not. Hell no. Nice work, buddy. Heck yeah, that was fun. Last morning of the hunt. <clears throat> so we're trying to get Luke, find Luke a buck. What we've noticed is we typically see majority of the deer, majority of the bucks while when we're out hiking. I think most people would think that you could glass most of this from the roads, but there's a lot of this country you can't see from the roads. You just gotta walk in a little bit. Seems like all the deer are kinda like know how to get in between the roads and out of out of view, so I don't know if this is the one though. How are you feeling about this? It is a nice deep draw. It's good it's good protection from wind and other things, but there's a lot of road noise too. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. Let's see. We're close to that feed lot. It's a lot of cow noise. I, I wouldn't want, if I was a deer, I wouldn't want that as my ambiance sound. You know? <laughs> it doesn't put you in your deer's in place? No, definitely not. There they are, up on the horizon. The buck skyline, barely. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's a sweet buck. No, you don't shoot the doe. No, you don't have to cross that road. Then we need to sprint back once they cross over. Dang, Matt, get that shot. He's tall. Dude, he's got some trash on him. Um, we should probably go towards that road. Wait, okay, let's let's sprint over here because they're gonna they're gonna come out this dry bed. They're, they're right go below over here. that our spirit horse, dude. They did cross yeah. the road. Did they? Yeah, they're headed so, up. So they're heading that up horse. towards that. They're gonna drop right down. Which we can still hunt, so we need to. Yeah. So I think let's go over here. They're gonna want to get to that CRP in that thick recover. Okay, they don't like being in the open. Guys, we just found a giant. Sure as enough, they're right in the middle. Like as far away from the road as you possibly can get. First saw doe running up and then this buck got up, dude. By far the biggest deer we've seen out here. He's got trash on him and he's a day one shooter. We just found him on day five. <laughs> but they kind of bumped and went across the road. So we got to haul butt back to the truck and hopefully go and relocate him. He's definitely a shooter. It's just about the time we thought that uh, we weren't going to find anything in that draw. We we must have bumped them because the doe skylined and then pulled my binoculars up and we saw a big buck. It's definitely a shooter. It's tall, mass, all the things really. It's a first day shooter and being that it's the last day, we're gonna try to find them. But it went the complete opposite way, so we're trying to hustle, cut cut them off. No, you're good. He Dude. looks like he may have broken off his fourth I, on his right side, but has trash on it. 
That or he grew really funky. He is yeah. funky, there's no doubt. Once we get around this bend, I think we're gonna be slightly exposed. The top of that hill that they're laying on was like right at 600. So let's get up like another 50 yards, see what that looks like. But I can see one bedded doe right now. I can't see the buck. I didn't want to push it to work it a little closer. So let's be real quiet because I think that cut bank, any sound is going to be magnified. Yeah, I'm so sand is real loud. Keep keeping this as quiet as we can. I'm just, I'll, I'll start to creep up. When we get He's hurting. I think he's dying, dude. He didn't move. No, <clears throat> you center punched his shoulder, dude. I think he's dead. I think it's a dead buck, bro. <laughs> dude. <laughs> that happened real fast. Oh my gosh. These deer were in a really good spot. The does are still just watching us, but uh, I just shot. That played out really hard. <laughs> We bumped these. We bumped this buck with these does and oh my gosh. We just walked like two miles trying to get to these guys. That was a freaking heck of a shot. Dude. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're kind of reeling still. Yeah. Look at look at all of them on the hillside. Yeah. Dude, they didn't even freak out when you shot. Did I shoot the wrong buck? There's another big buck over there. <laughs> Dude, I think that's the... I think that's the actual buck we were trying to shoot. Man, you freaking smashed him, dude. <laughs> I was, he was pretty good, I thought. I thought to... so, too. It's, there's three point. You shot a four point. Do you want to set it up real quick? <laughs> Look, give me a Working bonus left. buck setup. Head down. He's coming at us. Hold on, don't shoot yet. Two Chamber, go right behind him. Don't shoot the <laughs> Drilled him, dude. He's hurt bad. <laughs> he just did a backflip. Oh, oh. <laughs> nice shot, Robert. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> What? Drilled him, bro. Robert, man. Right. That was pretty wild. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. He doubled up on bucks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, we just got two bucks at that <laughs> one spot there. Let it happen. <laughs> He's got a little kicker on him. This is a pretty crazy way to wrap up a pretty fun week of hunting. No kidding, that was wild. Uh, it's been a really good good season for, for me, for Weatherby. We've, we've been all over the country, it feels like, hunting deer, but this was a unique one in that uh, we did public land, we've done private land like with permission, but with you guys' platform on Infinite Outdoors, we book through you guys and it gives us access to like multiple areas of, of private land. Yeah, it's really cool. And then on the last day, we bumped a really big buck and uh, we chased and chased and chased and two miles later I thought we found the big buck bedded in the shadows. I shot this great buck and then we saw the big boy <laughs> head out and I've never done that before but it, I think it happened. Still a beautiful buck. We never, we just could not see that buck and there was a doze everywhere so there was a group of tear that the, the group we were chasing they had one buck with them 
uh, had two bucks in it. So I shot this guy and no one left. And I wasn't even shooting suppressed. Like it was big boom, what's happening? And then all those echoes off every single canyon wall, they're like, what? I think that must've been it. They were very confused about what was going on. Casey, you're from where I was. I sat back from where I was. It was, they thought the noise was coming from up the canyons. They kept looking up the canyons. And that's where I, I kept looking up the canyon, trying to find out where the buck you shot was. But yeah, they had no idea what was going on. And all the while you're watching the big boy thinking I missed. Yeah, I was like, man, that tough luck. Missed the big guy. <laughs> And he just runs out of our lives forever, you know? But <laughs> you kill a great buck. No, I'm still pumped. I'm I'm disappointed in myself for not even considering because it was it felt like it went down for 20 minutes trying to figure out how we could get close enough to pull a shot off because there's so many does looking at us. And that was even stressful for us because we we backed off to not have as many people on the yeah. panel. I thought I'm like, oh my god, like they have gotta be close. There were there were two spots back there that we just had to cross quickly. Like they can see us. Okay. Yeah. There's no other way. And uh, got aggressive in the end to try to get up on the flat area and got in a shooting position. Could not see the biggest one, apparently. Well, you know, it's funny. It's so flat out here, but uh, these deer get really good at using any sort of topography they can find to hide themselves. And that's exactly what happened. This buck was just around this little tiny hill, but he's probably bedded in that spot, you know, a hundred times before. But, you know, you don't think it, like, you think you can, be, you can see everything out here, but all this little topography is what these deer use. And that's what he did yeah they were all tucked in like this the roads are all grids right so it's like north and south roads and then east and west roads and mile by mile cuts yeah there. just a big sections and uh you can't you can glass from the road and you might catch them traveling but all the duck all the bucks that we killed were bedded in a place that you could not see them right in between all the roads so have to put some miles on the boot yeah i sure worked three and a half miles in today yeah put, putting a play on these guys and we put a little effort in for years and laden's earlier in the week so really we got four good bucks in five days of solid hunting then. Saucy, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Really cool. I love what Infinite's doing. How can people find out more? Yeah, so uh, we're a mobile app platform, so you can always just uh, download the app on, on the App Store or the Google Play Store and, you know, operates essentially like, I don't know, a more tech advanced version of Airbnb, only it's ranchers getting access to hunting and fishing. Yep. So you can get the app right there or you can uh, go to infiniteoutdoorsusa.com and just see the desktop version has a few more FAQ pages and whatnot. Follow us on social media at infiniteoutdoors underscore USA. Casey, thanks, man. Thank you for the invite, man. This has been a fun hunt. It's definitely a, a little bit out of our wheelhouse, you know, hunting this open country, but right. it, it just adds a little bit, you know, to, to the hunt. It's been fun. It's been an absolute blast, but yeah, I love what you guys are doing with Infinite Outdoors, freeing up some uh, some private land for, for hunters and fishermen to go out and, and enjoy our, our uh, wild lands. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys coming out and glad it was a successful hunt for everyone. Well, we're loaded and ahead for the truck. Nice thing is, is all these bucks that we killed have been right in between, like right in the middle of all the roads. But it's always only like a mile, mile and a half hike out. So, got two quarters and some loose meat. Everyone's got some meat on their backs. Hauling two deer at, out at one time. That's always means a successful hunt. I'm eating pumpkin seeds. It's not sponsored by Spitz, but Spitz, if you're watching, we'd love to work together. Hook it up. Hook it up.